What'd you say you did? You said you did Fruit Kaboom and Glacier? I did Island Breeze and Glacier. I'm gonna try Fruit Kaboom. New shit! Intake, all-in-one pre-workout. Pretty fucking good. Uh, this is our all-in-one pre-workout, so everybody knows I love Hydraulic, Hydraulic 2. Um, this is a non-stim pump pre-workout, so the whole goal is to get you jam jacked and fucking juicy. And I was very big on the days that I was dragging ass, I would do one scoop of Hydraulic, one scoop of Ignition Switch, and one scoop of Demo Day. Well, Ignition Switch is gone, has been replaced, but significantly, seriously upgraded with intake. So today was a long day, and I need a little bit of a fucking kick in the balls, a little bit of caffeine. These were designed to be, this was desi designed for two scoops, get you fucking moving, jam jacked and juicy, or one, one, and one scoop. So we did the one scoop of in intake, one scoop of hydraulic. Now, we had in the demo day. Only half a scoop though. Half a scoop now, half a scoop later. Boop, boop, boop. All right, everybody. We're back to doing meathead shit. This is young Ty. He works in customer service. He's prepping for the Pittsburgh. What do we call you? We call you Porterhouse. Uh, Tomahawk. Tomahawk. Yeah. Every meathead here has a name. Corey, John, you, you're Wagyu, right? Something like that. King Meat, King meat Sticks. <laughs> Chicken Cutlet. <laughs> I don't know, it's just fun shit. So, uh, so after the month of mayhem, which was absolute fucking chaos, I loved it. Uh, but what it did was it helped kind of put me into a frame of mind of no matter what I was going, no matter how bad my day was or how intense my day was, I was doing a fucking hero workout. And it helped gain some perspective on just life in general and how awesome everything I have actually is. So, young Ty here is prepping for the Pittsburgh. He's doing the Pittsburgh second weekend in May. Yep, which we, is 13 weeks out this Saturday. I won the Pittsburgh when I was 24 in 09. How old are you? 23. 23. This is good times. So, what happened was, as he began prep for this, um, and I did the month of mayhem, and it helped me realize like how much I actually do love meathead training, and I love new shit. So what I decided was, if I did a work, hero workout every single fucking day for the entire month of January, why not take 12 weeks to see if I still got it? So this week is like the warm up. Get the fucking juices flowing. This is my second day back to lifting weights. I'm really sore in my back. We were training back last night. A little tender. I like it. Uh, but we're gonna do chest and some light shoulders today. I'm gonna run him through a light workout. He's probably gonna kick my ass, but. I don't know about that. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just excited. still got it. Don't let him lie to you. He still has it. I do. <laughs> I think it's in there. <laughs> I saw it on Sunday. It's, yeah. it's in there. Already. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna do what you guys are gonna see over the next several weeks, for the next 12 weeks. Uh, I did the month of mayhem. Why not dedicate 12 weeks to doing fucking fun meathead shit? So you're gonna see all of us train. You're gonna see us do uh, like raw style videos of, of the meatheads and us training and asking questions, like real questions from a young athlete trying to make it. Like Fuad, whenever I did bro chat, Fuad was like, I was talking about Ty and how he's using his posing coach and all the different things he's doing. And Fuad was like, Seth, he's like, why aren't, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm fucking busy all the time. And you know, Ty has his own life. He's like, well then make the fucking time. And I'm like, it's a really good point for what? So it helped just the month of mayhem was mayhem, but now I'm like, fuck it, 12 weeks, dude. I'm you gonna take 12 weeks to see if year. I still, huh? You got your CrossFit in for the year. Yeah, I'm good. My knees are fucking, I took a few days off. I'm fucking ready to go. Not ready to train legs yet though. Bro's got a fucking set of ham hocks on him. Very reminiscent, you know? Oh. When I was 24 years old, we would have been best friends. Mm -hmm. yep. We'd have hung out together and took a bunch of trend and it would have been yeah. awesome. We might start in the next six weeks. I don't know. We I might, think, it might I just... think we should. <laughs> so, chest and light shoulders. We're going to start with incline dumbbell presses. Yeah. Ty doesn't eat snacks. Nope, no snacks. Ty doesn't do snacks. Meals only. Which, did you eat your muffin this weekend? No. Ty was supposed to eat a muffin. <laughs> We're in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I don't want to eat a muffin. It's funny because like you are, you are strict on everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. I still better have than to be. Yeah. yeah. I want to fucking win, don't you? Yep. When I everybody else is posting their uh, post-show treats four weeks out and ordering them and putting them in their freezer, you already fucking lost to me. So. <sighs> See, 
This is that young shit that I love. I love it. Yep. They're worried about post-show meal, so go get it, buddy. You know, I... <sighs> it's supposed to be that way. Yeah. It's a competition. It's fun. Not the me versus me shit. <laughs> You're not into that, huh? You're like, I want to fucking yep. kill. So good. I watched you change. Pull them up. Push in blood. Control. 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 Mike Mencer thing, so it's not that I've never, I've never done it without my flare on it. Like, we just threw down with this. And I will say there's a big difference between if you're going to do volume training, like, we don't start counting sets to the 100s. To the 100s, yeah. That's, that's a big difference. It's like a lot of people, volume training, they'll say, oh, I'm going to do four sets of 10, and they'll go 50, 60, 90, 100, or something like that. No, 100 No, stuff. you can't start, like, if your progressive sets have to be challenging for it to be a to be oh, true volume yeah. training. I mean if I counted all my sets it's like fuck dude we did one one well, we did two multiple. three yeah. four five six we did six sets before we touched the hundreds exactly we're warmed up get them fucking well, which I do like that's one thing I do like between the menstrual style training where most of my warm-ups are three to five reps because that top set is all out balls of the wall so this is this is where it comes in now that we're warmed up we just threw down with some heavy weights yeah the 120s and the 130s and literally went to failure on the 130s without like see i i like i'm indifferent about doing partials whenever i get the heavy weights yeah. because that's whenever i think the risk of injury shit comes happens. in with yeah, yeah. shit happens mm -hmm. so now that we're warmed up move some like i'm full i fucking feel all my shit but, now i can do one warm-up set of some incline flies yeah. and then pick a weight and throw down with like go to failure absolutely and the one thing i like about the volume training is with all the warm-ups doing the higher reps i feel like you get a good pump and you build that connection. So when you do get to your heavier weights, like you're, you, feel, you have your pumped up, but the mind muscle connection is also there as well. So now it's, that's why I'm like, now I can do two work sets mm -hmm. on these flies instead of four of 10. Yeah. I can do two of fucking all out. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm in, like I'll do one warm up, make sure that I'm, I like the feeling, my, my, my chest feels it. I'm yeah. I, nothing like, no, no shit's happening. Like I got everything I want yeah. and then be like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So. 
you feel a difference from whenever you were out here compared to whenever you're in here? Yeah. Like for me, like I like doing like on the heavier end. Uh -huh. All I'm thinking about during this exercise is this. Mm -hmm. is fucking outside swoop so that way whenever I'm <sighs> come up here. That's this for like a, like the the low incline. That's what I'm thinking about. So like that's why whenever you dip down too far, yeah. too much shoulder engagement, like your force production becomes like your, your front delts. Yeah. So it's like whenever you're here, you feel it engage. Yeah, the fire, is that yeah right? and, then, and then I'm not coming all the way in, because if I come all the way in, that whenever I get weak, over. the front delt's gonna take over. So that's why I'm, I hang out right here. Mm -hmm. And if I lock out too much, my tricep gets involved. So I stay at like a seven eighths. And then all I'm thinking about is this, this big fucking swoop. Mm -hmm. Everything with a purpose. Bodybuilding shit. Mm -hmm. So that's like one of those things where if you're not going all the way down or locking out, you get a lot of the science guys on Instagram will be in your comment section saying, oh, that guy doesn't know how to train, but they don't understand the purpose behind what you're trying to do. Well, I mean, they, they, they do. They have an education. They have their background. They read their books. They did all that. But, I mean, this is where I'm just like, this is why... I mean, this is why I love the fucking yeah. gym because this is my body. Like, I'm, I'm pretty fucking good at this. Mm -hmm. I know that, like, if we do this whole workout and we work out for three weeks straight and you take on some of my principles, there's going to be ones that fucking hit with you. This is one of those things that people are like, oh, how do you get a thick, a, a fucking big swooping chest? And I'm like, well, I'll tell you exactly. You train with me, you'll see it. Like, everybody that had, you can, anybody can read a fucking book. Mm -hmm. But to apply it in reality and do it, it's very fucking difficult because you got to have your feel for your body and make small, tech, small differences, small technical differences in each one of your movements because that's what makes a great coach a great coach. Not because he read a fucking book. Yeah. Anybody can read a book. Anybody can go like, oh, look at me, do full fuck. Oh, I, I pinched my shoulders and I pushed all the way up. If it was that fucking simple, everybody would be the exact fucking same, but it's not that way. That's what makes bodybuilding so fucking unique and fantastic. Because it's like, that's the shit. That's the fucking part about being bros in the gym and looking at your physiques together and being like, bro, you got to pick up this. Dude, look at the sweeps on your quads. What have you been doing lately? That's what made this fun. That's what makes bodybuilding bodybuilding. And then that's one of those things too where like anybody can write dumbbell chest flies on a program. And mm -hmm. it, he, he does dumbbell chest flies you and were, you do dumbbell chest flies. You were just doing different. them and then yeah. I make two adjustments to you and you're like, oh, that was different. Mm -hmm. Meathead stuff. That's what makes being a bro in the gym with your bros so much fucking fun. Because you're able to pick out all the good and the bad. Like if somebody's fucking, if somebody just changed their physique changed and you're like, bro, what'd you do for quads? And then all of a sudden you all do it together and you're like, fuck yeah, that was awesome. That's what makes bodybuilding cool, dude. That's what, that's what, that's, that is the most uplifting thing you can do in the gym is, 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 learn together and one guy learns something spreads the fucking news and the love and the fucking intensity like how can't you like not throwing the 130s around it's fun. it fucking felt good
volume purposes, uh, undo little sides and superset them with dips. Okay. So yeah. we'll do some side laterals. Since we got all this fullness going on, we'll keep it moving, all the blood flowing up into the shoulders, and then uh, superset them with some fucking parallel bar dips. Outside of the chest, nothing crazy. Um, whole purpose again, just that outer sweep of the chest and then just pushing blood, more volume into the shoulders. If I, I don't know. Like I'm excited. Side, side raises, it's just fucking. Well, dude, this is ripped. Years and years of fucking work. Crazy training. And I mean, I'm. I mean, I always do my cardio and I eat decent. Like me eating a lot of food over the past several days is just. I'm filling up like crazy. Yeah. Skin's tight. Like the food's pushing. Hey, like. Stan might be onto something with the bone broth thing. Anabolic bone broth? I'm oh, in. It's, it's, it's real. It's not the testosterone. <laughs> no, I'm not taking any more tests. I'm just eating more. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, I want to I wanna see what happens over the next several weeks. I'm really excited about this because you do meathead shit again. Like, training with, training with, with bros is fun. Because it's, it's supposed to be this way. Like, it's, you're supposed to go into the gym with your butt. Same goals. Yeah. But the same mindset. Like, that's, that's everything. So. Like, who, like, like I, I, I enjoy my alone time of training. But then at the same time, whenever you're with people that have like goals, like, you're training by yourself, but with somebody that is literally not getting in your way. They're on the same fucking wavelength. They're in the same shit. They're thinking the same thing you are. They're like, fuck. Yeah, hit this fucking set. I want to see it because if you fucking smash this bitch, I'm fucking smashing mine. And I'm being in shape helps. Yeah. I know I'm in good cardiovascular shape, so like I can, I'm breathing. That was Hani's biggest fucking qualm with me was he's like, stop holding your motherfucking breath when you're training. And now I'm like, I'm in shape. It's just fucking nutty, dude. Just the front delts and the most muscular. It's like, jumps out at you. Good. 
Good. Good. Come on. Throw it. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. All right, man out. done the high volume like okay. three to four by tens twelves whatever the fuck yeah until recently i've been doing like more mike mentor two yeah. working sets yeah okay like whenever you say that though are you how many reps are you doing on those two working sets are you going to failure or are you just picking a number like i usually pick a number but make sure it's failure like it could be like okay. eight it could be I 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what we just did was like spamming lat raises to failure like yeah. intervals to like 30 to 35 reps, just burn out. Yeah, like do 10, take five seconds, right. do five, do 10. I can't yeah. fucking lift my arms. Yeah. They're pumped. Yeah. Will that correlate directly? Like, does that mean that my body, like, that's good for my body because, like, I feel that pump there that I usually wouldn't feel at a, a lower set? So, this is where, uh, like, why Hani and I align so much on training, okay? So, like, I believe blood flow, nutrient flow, growth. Like, that's been my concept. And when I met Hani and his FST7 concept, same thing. Like, I believe that as a bodybuilder, you have to be strong. You can't be a pussy. However, like, you can't do what we just did on every single set of every single right. exercise. No, you specifically, strategically place it in a fucking workout for a specific reason. I just felt like those were the right thing to do at the time because we're not doing a bunch of shoulders. We're doing chest with light shoulders, okay? So I think that because we're gonna stretch the muscle fascia. That is literally FST7, fast fascia stretch training. Mm -hmm. That's what FST stands for. So the concept is, is to stretch out the muscle fascia to make it rounder, fuller, and you're not using light weights. You're not a pussy. You gotta break down the muscle, but we're gonna push as much blood into that specific area for a reason. Like, and dude, you can see it in my shoulders, I'm fucking round. Yeah. My shoulders didn't get super round like this from not doing a lot of them. Like, I personally believe, personally believe that I cannot look like this from doing four sets of eight. No way. So, because I'm a bodybuilder, I want a round, three-dimensional physique that's round and full and grainy and hard. So therefore, like, I'm not going to get there by doing four sets of eight, even if that eight is a failure number. So throwing in, like, intensifiers, FST7 is an intensifier. FST7 is a style of training, and I consider it to be an intensifier because I like, I like the concept of training, of stretching out the muscle fascia and rounding it off. Like, that's why I've always been volume. Cutler was this way. Drop sets, giant sets, fucking strip sets. Yeah. All of it is pushing blood into a specific part of the muscle group that you're training. Like we didn't do, we didn't do fronts, we did sides. So my sides should be fucking super round. Like if I do all, if I just go and do uh, three sets of eight, 
dude, I, I'm probably gonna get some bigger delts because my delts would be bigger from doing three or four sets of eight instead of doing nothing at all. Okay, so it's gonna work to a certain extent, but whenever it comes into like a crazy fucking uh, intensifier set like that, whatever the fuck you wanna call it, whatever anybody wants to call it, I'm just gonna fucking do it because I just wanna get big and huge. I think in my head whenever I was training and figuring things out, I'd be like, yeah. So if I do, because in my head, this doesn't take a rocket scientist, if I grab the 40s and I know I can get 15, but that 15, that's whenever I'm like, ah, so what happens if I just hold the weight and like rest for five seconds with the weight in my hand? Don't put it down so there's still tension pulling on my shoulders. I take five seconds and I'm like, fuck it, five more. Nice, and then I'm like, fuck dude, I actually like, my shoulders got bigger and then I started failing on that fifth one and I'm like, fuck, wait five more seconds, then do it again. You, just, you keep pushing farther past failure like to get to the next level of failure. Yeah, because otherwise, why the fuck am I eating and taking all this shit? Right, just to come and walk three by eight done. Doesn't, for me, in my head, I love this. So like whenever I did this and people were like, dude, your fucking shoulders are vascular and like they're always in shape and they just got all this. It's like, yeah, because of how I fucking train. It's if you do that every single time for shoulders, how do you think your shoulders are gonna look? Way different. <laughs> so literally, and that's the thing where everybody has their different styles of training and their different concepts and their different, you know, whatever, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. I'm just like, this is just how I train. Like whenever, that's why Hani and I got along so well. Is it also instinctive? Yeah, because like I've been doing this. At point, you're like, I think this might be Dude, I, like that's like the whole set set thing that I came up with. It was like, okay, how can I pick a number that's like way past further than where I would go? Like my concept is, is like failure was 15 with the 45s or 20. But then I'm like, is it that? Is that my failure set? Or can I just wait five seconds or 10 seconds, let the blood flow to that area even more, allow the blood to flow and then do it again. And then I noticed if I did that, my shoulders got even more full than they were from that failure. So then I'd, I'd figure out another one and another one and another one. Just keep going until literally I can't do any more fucking reps. Now that's gonna expend all your energy. It's gonna fucking put you in, into a different a mindset of training. So hence where being fueled, hydrated, and using supplementation to better your workouts. Mm -hmm. That's why demo day and carbohydrate powders were so big for me because if I shit the bed halfway through a workout or I was pushing myself way further, I'd have a rapid glycogen loader to go right into my fucking training to push to the next, to the next point. So it's like, dude, you know, if you're, it depends on your goals. If you want to get to that level, like that's the type of shit, like, where's the fucking book to say to do that? Nowhere. There's no book. There's no fucking book in here. Just no. do it and see what happens. What's the worst thing that can happen? Grow. <laughs> that's literally the worst thing that can happen. As long as you use your head and don't let bad things happen or injure yourself, you do the fucking, that's what makes this fun. It's like I said, that's like, that's how you're going to find out so much. Like, um, like Seth says, like the reason that you do you do a you do go to fucking failure with heavy weight might be six might be ten and then you drop the weight cut the weight in half and double the reps you just did well you're probably going to not get to that that double the reps so you got to set the weight down let the blood flow get back in the fucking mindset and tell yourself you're hitting that motherfucking number so it's this whole it's a mindset and i was doing that when i was fucking you know 17 18 years old and then whenever honey and i met that was the whole like this is cool as fuck. Dude, you think like me? You think like me? And hence why he just loved, we, we loved training together. Because it was just this fucking, like, it's that, it's that whole thing with bros and a good coach and it's somebody that connects with you, that you're on the same wavelength in the gym. That's how fucking magic happens. I do miss having fucking massive traps. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like, when I put my t-shirt on in the morning, like, after my, sh I do my cardio, the shower and all that, I put my t-shirt on, and I'm just like, man, he just said he doesn't have massive traps. I know. Dude, I, come no, on. But like, that's the thing though, like, to, to the normal eye, you see a guy like him, you go, he's fucking huge, but like, he was on, like, people can't even fathom what level he was on unless you saw it in person. Like, understand, like, what 245 pounds lean at that, that height looks like. Like, people don't. Um, I was 35 pounds bigger yeah. and leaner than I am right now. People, like, that's the thing, like, people, no matter what pictures do, it's never gonna do that justice. Like you, you'd have to fucking see it. Like it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like it. Again, that's why. That's why. Like I don't know. That's why. Like open bodybuilding. I just. I. I never want to see it die. 
even though like people criticize so many guys on the gear and it's so unhealthy and it's this and it's that it's like yeah but dude we're the circus dude it's fun show like that that's what open bodybuilding is it's like if you want to see something pretty go watch men's physique or classic like open body yeah i love classic dude i think it's phenomenal there's a reason why not everybody can do classic i mean like you have to have genetic structure and like it's a skill to like look like that and keep your waist that tight all year round, but like... Yeah, but then... But I then, mean, you see Nick Walker hit a most muscular, people go, what the fuck is that? But that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, that's what makes bodybuilding cool, yeah. is because like, no matter, no matter how kind of... Nick Walker doesn't have the greatest like aesthetic genetics. Branch Horn, not the greatest aesthetic genetics. But I tell you what, they said, fuck you, I'm going to make it happen, and were some of the greatest bodybuilders to walk on the stage. Marcus yeah, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're ugly. good like you you can see like we just trained your uh -huh. full in the shoulders your chest thick your chest is full right now which is great like you can see like you're starting to diet down the waist is coming in nice and tight like your side tricep looks great yeah that's gonna be you, good your, your side like tricep it's that's a tough, tough I think side triceps one of the toughest poses mm -hmm. yeah hit it most muscular again I mean, I've been I've been doing like hands together like this. Mm -hmm. I've been doing. I've been playing with like having a hand in my palm. But I mean, I don't think I think this is the this is the pose. Like you're good, you're full, you're round. Yeah. Yeah. I personally think that 
as you continue to go, it's going to be. I, I don't think, however, you hold your hands. It's going to make much difference. No, I think it's going to be a mad, like the illusion that you're creating with the waist yeah. and what pop makes your shoulders pop the most. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Stay big. Yeah, yeah. stay big. Rear lat spread looks much better. Yeah, I feel like with the past couple weeks, I finally been able to get my lower lats to fire for the mm -hmm. first time. Stand up a little bit. There you go. Don't lean too far mm -hmm. back. Yeah, good. Thirteen and a half weeks. You're in a good spot. You think? Yeah. yeah. I just worry about being behind all the time. But being what? Behind. No, you're not behind. <laughs> no, you're not behind. I think that I think that you're on a good spot because, you, dude, you're young. Yeah. Like you're 23 years old. Like you're you're still developing. You're still growing new tissue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's just gonna maturity is gonna come over time. Like for where you are right now, your your everything is over the past few weeks. Everything has continued to get tighter, you're still full, you're still strong, you yeah. want to stay that way. Stay that way. Because you're what right now? What? How much you weigh right now? I was 234 this morning. 234 this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll probably, where do you want to stay on the stand on stage? Um, I'd say probably realistically around like 215. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care about the weight, I just want to be peeled. No, I was just going to say you're, you're, yeah. you're on the path, so. Good. Sweet. Meathead stuff. Thank you for joining everyone. There's going to be way more of this shit going forward. We got the Meathead crew. We're going to be doing tons of fun, more whiteboard workouts to come. And uh, I don't know. Over the next few weeks, we're going to see if I still got it. We all know he's still got it. Don't let him lie to you. <laughs> He'll be 225 with striated quads and all that fun shit. So. Ah, I love it. Let her know you love her. Thanks, guys.